Hello and welcome to the OTB channel. So, Linux has done really well over the last few years. It's uh, almost taken over the world. The internet infrastructure basically runs on it and big companies like Facebook, Google, Amazon all use it. The chances are that it's already in installed on your phone, sort of, in the form of the Android operating system. And the chances are even the firmware in such things as your TV box already runs on Linux. So you've been thinking about making the move to installing Linux on your desktop. Or perhaps you're already a Linux fan and uh, you've decided that you're going to convert all your friends and family and install Linux on their laptops and desktops. Well, in either case, before you jump in with both feet, take some time out and ask yourself a number of questions. This is what I'm going to be talking about during this video. Here's the intro. Okay, welcome back. So, my first question really would be, are you prepared for the Linux install? And more specifically, are you prepared for things not working out quite as you planned? The Linux install is actually easy, and 99% of the time there's no problems. You hit next, 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 and you're up and running in 10, 15 minutes, and all of your hardware works, and you can connect to printers without having to don download drivers. But there are those situations where things don't quite work out as planned. And you might have to do a little bit of research to, or jump through some hoops to get some of your hardware working. The install might also not go quite as planned. And in that case, have you done a backup of all your data? And do you have the technical know-how to put your computer back to the state it was in before you started this? It's all about doing some research just in case. If you're prepared for the unexpected, that's a good starting point. The second question to ask yourself is, do you enjoy the learning process? Because you're going to need to. Linux works completely differently from Windows or Macs. And if you want to do more than just browse the web or look at your email, the chances are you're going to have to learn new software and a completely different way of managing your system. It really helps if you enjoy that process, because if you don't, it could be a really frustrating experience. Just something to bear in mind. Okay, number three. How will you actually choose the distro you're going to install? This is a question that doesn't just affect new users, but affects us all. Because we are absolutely bombarded with choices in Linux. If you go to distrowatch.com, you will probably see that there are well over 200 distros out there, all based on slightly different... Um, versions of Linux and all looking slightly different from each other, how do you possibly choose? Do you simply choose on the basis of uh, what it looks like? Because Linux can look absolutely amazing. Or are you going off recommendations from other people? Well, either of those is a legitimate way of choosing, but please bear in mind that Linux is endlessly customizable, so it doesn't really matter what it looks like to start off with. As you get to know the system, you can customize it to your heart's content. So don't be persuaded right from the get-go of choosing a distro just because you like the look and feel of it. Many of us have uh, fallen into that trap. If I was a brand new user, I would restrict my choices to three or four of the big names. So you have Ubuntu Linux, 
you have uh, Pop OS, you have MX Linux, you also have the likes of Ferran OS. And try and avoid choosing some of the harder to install distros uh, right from the word go, such as Arch or uh, even Gentoo. And once you've chosen, stick with it. Whilst you're learning Linux, don't just keep moving on and getting into that trap of hopping from one distro to the next to try and resolve a problem. If you face a problem, try and resolve it within the distro that you've chosen. Once you've done that and you've got a good feel for the system, then I've no doubt you will go on to try other distros. But it's probably not a good thing to go distro hopping right from the word go. Stay with one, learn the system, customise it to your liking. Okay, number four, let's address uh, what could be the elephant in the room. Will you need to use the Linux command line? It's a legitimate question and possibly a concern because the command line tends to be used in Linux a lot more than it does on Windows. Whilst you have your command prompt in Windows, I very much doubt the average user ever brings up a command terminal to actually work with it. In Linux, it's slightly different. The Linux terminal, terminal is incredibly powerful and no, you don't necessarily have to use it when you install Linux. You really don't. Especially in this day and age, you can probably get away with the vast majority of things without ever opening a terminal. But if you do that, you're missing out. You really are. You should be prepared to learn some basic Linux commands in the terminal and you will get so much more back from using the operating system. And in fact, if you're searching for support on forums or, or the like, you may be given certain commands that you need to run into in the terminal. So it's nothing to be scared of. It's a really useful tool. In one way, it's what separates us from some of the operating systems, the fact that we still do go to the terminal much quicker than, say, a Windows or a Mac user would. But that's a good thing. Don't let it scare you. Okay, question number five, and this is probably the most important question of everything that we've talked about so far. Do you absolutely rely on proprietary software um, from, say, Adobe or Microsoft or someone else where a Linux version isn't available? Because if you do, the switch to Linux might not be a good move for you. You've probably heard that Linux has this thing called Wine, which allows us to run some programs, uh, Windows programs, but it's not perfect. It really isn't. Some programs will run, perhaps not all of the features, but the basics of the programs may run. Others may be absolutely perfect. Others won't work at all. So you should not rely on Wine. As far as gaming is concerned, yes, gaming under Linux has come on leaps and bounds in the last year or so. But again, you may struggle compared to Windows. And you may have to spend more time configuring the system so that a Windows game runs. Now, if you find yourself in this situation, you may take the, make the decision that uh, perhaps you just stay on the operating system that you're currently running. And that's a legitimate choice. Or if you're still really keen on moving to Linux, well, you do have options. You could always dual boot, or you could perhaps run Windows in a virtual machine on your Linux operating system. Either way, it's perhaps not as straightforward as you've been used to. So ask yourself the question, is that something you're prepared for? And is that something that you could live with? Right, number six, and uh, the last but not least question uh, that you should think about is how much support do you think you will need running Linux over your first three to six months? 
This is a critical question because when you buy uh, a machine from a shop, they usually have an obligation to support you. With Linux, because you do it yourself for the most part, there are the there is the odd place out there where you can buy Linux pre-installed, but the few and far between. So you do it yourself. And if it all goes wrong and you break it, you have the freedom to keep the pieces. There is no formal support channel in the vast majority of cases. There are, however, lots of informal support channels, IRC, forums, and information all over the place in the form of wikis and YouTube videos. And you will probably find if something goes wrong, you will need to refer to one of those informal sources. Now, if you do that, it's really important that you do as much work as possible yourself. You need to do the research before you go on a forum and ask a question. This is fair warning, really, that if you go on a forum and come out with a question such as, please help, my Wi-Fi isn't working, uh, you stand every chance of being flamed or given the RTFM, read the flipping manual, um, or an answer like that. And that's because Linux users are usually prepared to help newer users, more than prepared to help, but there is an expectation there. Linux is all about freedom, but with freedom come certain obligations, and those obligations are, before you go and ask a question, that you should have done some research yourself. If you're asking a question such as, my Wi-Fi is broken, you should be providing details of what Wi-Fi card or chip you're using, what you've done so far to get it working, uh, what you've tried, what sources you've looked at, and then people will probably be more, more inclined to help you. You should also be aware that there are some questions that uh, just elicit sighs from the whole community. One that I see all the time is, hey guys, I've just uh, moved to Linux. Which is the best Linux distro? There is no answer to that one. There is no best Linux distro. All the distros have strengths and weaknesses, and what's right for you may not be right for somebody else. Also, that question's probably been asked 30 or 40 times on a forum. Search the forum, find what people have said beforehand. You'll need to be more proactive in terms of seeking out support than perhaps you have been in the past. You may even end up really enjoying the process, learn a lot, and like many of us, start to quite enjoy it when things go wrong because it means you get a chance to experiment and learn a little bit more. But ultimately, it's all about mindset have you got the right mindset and are your expectations in terms of what support you are entitled to appropriate? Because remember, when it comes to informal support, the people helping you have no obligation to support you. They're doing it out of the goodness of their hearts and because they want to help. So please respond appropriately to them. Right, so... We've run through that, and uh, you're still of the mind that, yep, you want to install Linux. Well, great. Welcome on board. The chances are it's going to be a decision that you'll never regret. You'll really enjoy Linux, and uh, welcome to the community. Just be aware that it is going to be different, and you probably need to adopt a slightly different mindset to what you've been used to. I'd like to come back at this point before we finish to those existing Linux users who are keen to install Linux on the computers of friends and family. Back in the day, I was an IT tech, and uh, I was all about evangelism, and uh, I tried to install Linux on as many broken Windows PCs as I could. It turned out to be... Um, 
something that I regretted. Only do it if you're prepared to be that person's support channel, perhaps endlessly. And be prepared for the fact that Linux may not ending, end up being for them and you may well have to go back and reinstall Windows for them. So always be honest with people about what their expectations and potential uh, issues may be if they switch to Linux. Right, that's it for today. Have a great day, people. And don't forget, you can find us on uh, Library as well. Mm -hmm.